guys, welcome back uh, to Basketball Talk Pro. I uh, hope you had a nice uh, holiday period there. It got a little long for me, but some, I had some issues. But this morning I was reading, I, I love to read the Wall Street Journal. I think you probably know, know that already. But um, they have a section on Saturday called The Review. And, and really, you could educate yourself if that's all you did was read that section carefully every Saturday. Uh, they got more stuff in there that are just great, great things. Uh, but this morning it was one, uh, they had a huge article on this. Uh, a guy had done extensive studies on why some people perform better, primarily in the business world now, uh, and, but it applies to all worlds. Uh, why some people perform better and work less than others. Uh, and uh, so they did uh, really extensive studies of, you know, big businesses. And there was a um, Stanford study, a man who worked on this for, for years and, and, and years. But what they came out with was very simple, they, and that's what they said. People that perform the best do things very simply and they focus on just the most important things that they, uh, that they have to do. They don't, they say no to the, the clutter things and focus completely on the important things. And I think as coaches, if we would do that, uh, you would make a big difference uh, in the success uh, of your career. There was a quote in this article though that, that just tickled me and I want to share it with you. Uh, it's a, I, I don't remember the name of the, the philosopher. It was a man back two, three uh, hundred years ago uh, that came up with this saying. Uh, here's the saying, perfection is finally attained not when there is no longer anything to add, but when there is no longer anything to take away. And I think that as coaches, we start out with just this huge uh, combination of things that we think are, are important that we have to do. Uh, but uh, the more we coach, the smaller it gets until it's just down to the things you absolutely need to do to succeed. Uh, and um, I think it's good for us to understand those things. Too many coaches have got so much clutter. Uh, there's so much stuff that you should be throwing away and forgetting about and focusing on the wrong things. I mean, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about two things today that uh, are ignored that could do more to help you win than any offense, any defense, any set of drills that you can come up with unless you're drilling on the two things and you're drilling intelligently on the two things that I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, it's, it's two simple little things defensive rebounding, and steals. Uh, the combination of those two, if you do better than your opponents on any game or over the season, on those two things, you're going to win 79% of your game. Uh, now you can have a nice career at 79% uh, percent, uh, uh, winning. Uh, just those two little things that nobody pays any attention to. They're, they immerse themselves in turnovers and rebounds and uh, free throws and three-point shots and, and, and forget that this is what will win you games, these two things. Um, I, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about defensive rebounding today. Uh, though I'll, I'll get into steals a little bit, but next time, because steals have something special 
that we need to consider as a coach. I'm going to talk about them uh, the next time. Defensive rebounding, why is that so uh, have, have such an effect on uh, our winning and losing? Well, the first thing it does, two things, I'm only going to give you two things. The first thing it does is stops an additional chance for the offensive team. In other words, it ends the possession. If, they, if you don't get the defensive rebounds, they get another opportunity to score. And that opportunity to score is at a very high level. That has an OER of 1.18. Doesn't mean if they just grab it and put it back. It also takes into consideration throwing it out and then attacking. But that uh, additional time with the ball after you missed a shot is much more uh, productive than before you missed the shot or getting that shot. Uh, so you're taking that away from the offensive team when you get a defensive rebound. Uh, it ends their chance down the floor. The second thing is it provides the defensive team with a fast break to transition. You have to consider transition in this uh, whole look at things. Transition is when you don't get a shot at the end of the fast break, but you keep attacking. Uh, you know the language we use here. That's the trans transition uh, period. Well, that transition and fast break period uh, have an OER of 0.96. The second highest uh, OER uh, that uh, 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 of, of, of anything, any possession that you get. When you get a possession from a defensive rebound, you're going to score almost one point uh, every time, an average of one time per possession. That's very high. You're better off with that possession than when you go down and face a set defense because at that possession, it's about 0.54 or something like that, that that I remember. That's the, the uh, that, this is an important thing, but, but hardly anybody pays any attention uh, to it. And I'm talking about right up to the NBA. Uh, you know, I've been with four teams. I never saw them work on, uh, on that, that, that aspect. I did see the Lakers under Phil, Phil Jackson when I was grading them and breaking down their film in the playoffs against Philadelphia that how effective uh, the, the Lakers were after a defensive rebound. Uh, and they didn't really fast break. They just moved the ball down carefully and smoothly went into their, uh, uh, their uh, triangle offense. Uh, they were very effective uh, at that. Why is it that, that those possessions are so much better than the other possessions? It's, it's also very simple. Contested shots. Those possessions, have, uh, you have a better chance of getting an uncontested shot. And that's what makes your field goal percentage is uncontested shots. Uh, it's very definite that getting the ball after an offensive rebound, for example, whatever you do, you're probably going to get a very high percentage of uncontested shots the same way you're going to get a high percentage of uncontested shots when you fast break uh, and um, make transition. So what you're looking for here in your rebounding is missed shots. We all count the shots carefully that we make. We have a percentage for that. In fact, we got three percentages for that. Uh, 
but nobody seems to have a percentage of missed shots. Missed shots by the opponent are highly valuable to you and they're destructive to you if you're missing shots because you're giving them great chances. Defense helps offense. Offense uh, helps uh, defense. Now on the end of steals, uh, by the way, defensive rebounds should, to, to excel in that area, should be higher than 70%. And now that's relatively easy because so many teams don't try to rebound offensively. I'll never understand that. Whoever thought that up uh, did not, uh, it, it, was, it was either not very good statistically or didn't use statistics. He just dreamed it up thought, uh, and thought that would be a, a, a cruel thing to do, but it's not. Uh, and so don't do it, do it your, uh, your uh, self. Now steals, uh, when you steal the ball, they don't get a shot. They get nothing. They don't even get an opportunity for an offensive rebound. That's a zero percent uh, uh, possession. Zip. They don't get anything. And you get a great opportunity to fast break into transition. That's the highest, per, most productive possession that you can get is, is off of a steal. That is at point nine eight, almost one point for every time uh, you, uh, you get a steal. Steals are interesting, and I want to talk about them in particular because of how, where you get steals and how. Uh, it isn't what it looks like or people love to see. You know, uh, uh, some of these steals where they come in and uh, get to the ball before it gets to the receiver, they pick it off and are on the way. Those are really, uh, appearance-wise, dynamic steals. But that may be the only one they get. Uh, I'm talking about steals that come in a different way. And I want to talk to you about that uh, next time. They're not glamorous and they're not really exciting but they are very, very productive. Two things you have to do. If you do them right now, start working with your team and have intelligent work uh, practicing good practices on these things, you will see a, a big difference in your, your team. Rick Sturzicki the other day when, when he talked he talked about he had never had a team uh, out rebounded. Uh, and uh, a, a lot of the people that either played for me or coached uh, with me uh, say, say the same thing for one reason. I don't teach blocking out and they don't, didn't either. Uh, reflect on that uh, a little bit. But we'll see you next time. I want to talk about steals. Thank you and see you next time.